I watch it and I believe, you know, some of these guys have phenomenal skills. Phenomenal skills. You've got to remember, these guys have not gone to college, university, art school or anything. All these guys are self-taught and that's the magic of it. I'm Billy and basically I've been running this shop for the last three years. It's amazing where I started and where I've gone to. Initially I used to be a sports shop here and when the riots happened in Tottenham in 2011 my shop was vandalised through the riots. I then spent six or seven months basically to bring it back to its original sort of state and then realised that I wasn't bringing back the business that I had prior to the riots. When doing research and inquiring what had happened, I realised that all the youngsters that were involved in the riots were all from round here. So they'd all been arrested. So overnight I lost literally 90% of my business base. So a guy walked in talking to me about graffiti paint this and graffiti paint that. And I said, surely people are not still graffiti painting. You know, I thought it was something that was done in the 80s. He says, no, it is, it's been done. Anyway, I went down to Markfield Park, which is a local skate park where a lot of graffiti artists go and paint. Anyway, in going down there, I realised that graffiti was really strong up and going. So I started to do my inquiries, you know, what paints are being used and what's been happening. And I slowly got into the graffiti game. And as time went on and I got to meet people and realised that they are genuinely a nice bunch of people. All they're interested in is doing what they love, which is to paint. I mean, people say they're vandals and this and that, and I disagree with that. Because you have vandals in football, you have vandals in rugby, you have vandals in everything. So I don't see why they demonise graffiti as a vandal's hobby. It's actually, in my eyes, a lot of intellectual people that do graffiti because you understand these guys have never been to university, have never been taught how to do it. All these guys are self-taught people, you know? My name is Stack, I've been working for four years. I got into graffiti because I started at school. I was tagging at school with one of my friends and I just kind of thought that was the sort of thing I wanted to do. And uh, I, one day I was on a, a, like a pub crawl. One of my mates, uh, he came up to me, introduced me to another boy who lived near me. And uh, he was on it. He was on doing everything, like painting trains, painting walls. We used to do everything. And plus, he was older. So at the time I was 16 and he, uh, he had a flat in that so I could go to his after and then my, obviously my mum and dad were moaning and I think there's no one me coming in four o'clock in the morning because I've been painting trains and that sort of thing but um, yeah I started that's how I kind of went from there really I went from chilling with him and then it took a turn because I was going to legal walls and then my pal that kind of got me onto painting trains and doing train yards and things like that so I've done local ones and then me see painting you want your name everywhere with graffiti you want it absolutely everywhere there's no way you don't want it 
So having your name on all the trains, all the fronts, any barriers, ticket barriers, anything on the, that's why the trains are used so much, the trains and, and, the, and the train lines, everything like that. It's used so much because so many people use it. So sometimes you see people, or like even regular people, you'll be talking to your mum and dad and saying, they'll say, oh, did you see that graffiti at the station of that, that cool character? So you see that sort of thing and you think like, you know, people do notice that. It does get noticed by normal people as well as people who paint. Because it's not easy to pick it up and do it. But um, there's plenty of people I've seen that are just unbelievable as well. Like some people I've painted with are just out of this world. You see people painting, they're just some things they can put up. I mean, I was once in League Street and there was a guy there taking pictures. It was something to do with the government. Those bloody vandals. And he went, I could hear him like only bloody vandals. They're taking pictures. And I said, went to me, do you paint? I said, no, I actually sell the paint. Oh, he went, so you're to blame for all this. I said, no. I said, but what, what's the problem? I said, this is a legal wall. They come here, they're expressing themselves, they're portraying something they feel, colours they want to put up there. I said, you don't realise the, the, the foreplay before this happens. It's not something they just come along and do. Before this happens, they actually pick their colours, they have a plan, they have a theme, they have a character, they have a letter, and they come in and they execute that on the wall. And they get a high out of that. So how can you sort of, you know, call these people whatever? I said, if I gave you a can and asked you to write your name, I said, you wouldn't be able to write it. I used to think they all went to school initially, you know, to learn. He goes, no. Nah. I said, how did you just practice, practice, and then you just pick up the skills, you watch the next guy, you pick up tips from him, you pick up tips from him. And you just, you know, mature your craft. And, you know, a lot of people do not know this. Unless you're in it, cause to me, this is like a secret world. Unless you're in it, you'll never understand. Like myself, three years ago, if you'd have said to me graffiti, I said, what are you talking about? What graffiti, you mate? They don't still write. The last time I remember was the Beastie Boys and things like that. Uh, you know, because if you're not in it, you miss it. I'm walking down the streets, every one looking at me. On my head, hi, honey, cause I'm fuck out these bitches. They said that I'm fucking crazy, but baby, come on, it's easy. I kill out these fucking MCs cause I don't care about my And I rock <laughs> but I found that funny. My English smells shit, but I don't mind. And I do my things, yes, in my mind I bleed. But I run my tears, baby, give me some beer. There's people I've met painting that have just got the most normal jobs. Like, uh, some of them are, so I've, got, so I've seen like building surveyors, estate agents. Uh, oh, I think even, I think someone told me there's like two people are lawyers, they're into law, and they're painting, painting trains. And some of them have got kids. There's geezers that paint legal walls now, they've got grandkids. That's mad, you think some people just, they still want to do it so much. And there's so much time for it as well. And I do believe graffiti is a way of discharging frustration because I watch these guys they they go into a zone and for that 40 minutes or two hours or four hours that they paint they walk away content with themselves they've discharged you know bad energy frust you know you come away feeling better for yourself and it, once you're able to do pieces that are a bit more acceptable and you know more likable you get more satisfaction out of it Otherwise, people wouldn't be just painting week after week after week if they're not getting something back from it. For myself, I feel like I don't, ever, I don't think I'd ever stop painting. I think it'd always be about, everyone would always be doing it. It's one of the things you wouldn't stop anyway. Even with this new thing with the stations and that, when they stop the barriers, it'll still always be going. They'll never stop people painting. It's just one of them things. Everyone's jumping on it. But, yeah, I don't think it'll ever end. I told God I'll be back in the
doing a little drop on graffiti. What do you think? What do you think this VIP is doing, mate? Sick things! <laughs>